Hi. Greetings, dear precious spirit soul that you are. Yeah, you can tell it's cold out here. It's great. It's wonderful to be here and to be with you and acknowledge you. And my topic, it's okay to laugh and be joyous. It's, it, it's so interesting how oftentimes we feel that the way to help others is to feel bad. And if you don't feel bad, then other people will then think that you don't care. Like you say, gee, I'm sorry that happened. But see, what, what happens is it's, it's, it's a program of keeping everybody afraid, uh, sorrowful, no joy because you're respectful, because you want people to know you care. You don't want someone to confuse you, you or to, to say that you're heartless and you have no feelings and all of this sort of things. A big, big, big push. And, and it's also, it's like I was talking to a family member and she was going on about her childhood, which she's, you know, not a child, a yeah, big person, and was telling me all the things and it, she didn't have, and it was lucky. And then I said, you know, because I know her, I said, you know, I don't feel sorry for you at all. You're a fabulous person, have a great life, wonderful family, husband, children, you're a great person. And she just stopped in her tracks and she started laughing. I said, yeah, we're always trying to convince, a lot of people are trying to convince someone else of how pathetic their life is and how pathetic it was and how they didn't have opportunities, they didn't have choices, they liked the brother, the sister more than you, people develop hatreds, they develop all these attitudes and such. And, and a lot of people, they don't know how to play, to be joyful, to laugh, not at, laugh at other people's um, uh, situations, but just the joy of the beingness of who you are. And, uh, and it is okay to be joyful even if other people are miserable. That doesn't mean you're not caring and you're not endeavoring for their welfare and doing everything you possibly can, except you can't do what they have to do for themselves. And like this, this season, what I've been doing is making a lot of gifts and, 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 Putting those gifts of my um, talks, my my materials that I've written in magazines that I've had for years, that's wonderful, wonderful teachings. Because I tell you, the book my my number one best New York bestseller was uh, How to Have More in a Have Not World, and I wrote that for a brother-in-law that I had that was a uh, being a prison guard in a Louisiana jail. He gave me a call. He was so depressed and so terrible. It was such an awful, awful situation. And oftentimes people think, well, if you if you give me a lot of money and then I can get another job. But it doesn't work that way because whatever pattern we have in our mind, the way we're operating, you're going to go back to that same situation until the person understands or, or they, they understand who they are, how this world operates, their divine powers and abilities, and they they can attain whatever they desire. And when we give our memories power, when we when we when we bring the past into the present and then suffer because we have these stories that we've made up, and this is what the mind does, it's always making up a story. And then we go into a certain time of the, the year where, uh, again, the holiday season, where so many people get depressed because their life isn't like it used to be or when it was, they didn't get the red bicycle for Christmas 40 years ago and still going over it so they could feel bad and generate all those emotions and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but you're doing that to yourself. So how about... Get that commitment to laugh. And when, and when when we really have joy in our heart, and, and you might notice that there's a lot of people out there that, that they're so serious, so um, absorbed in the fears and the doubts and the insecurities and, and the objectives of the, of the mind, and that they, they're not light of heart. And wasn't there an ancient Egyptian ritual that when the person had left their body, they would 
kind of yucky, but weigh their heart. And if their heart was light as a feather, that meant that they would go on to the divine life. But oftentimes people's hearts are heavy. And we're and heavy for what isn't even here right now. And then projecting and agreeing. You know, when you get all the people in the networks or the the whether it's mainstream or alternative or or whoever's talking or telling you, so many people are saying, This is the way it's gonna be. Or it's, it's, it's in the book of Revelation, or Nostradamus says that. But you, people don't get, people tamper with all of that stuff. And after a while, it, became, it becomes a plan. It becomes a game plan. And then it gets everybody to agree with it. And agreement creates reality. So how is the best way we can help ourselves and others is to maintain, I would call it God consciousness, divine consciousness, the joy of being. But the joy of being doesn't mean you're a, 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 a dunce, a goofball, uh, a, or anything like that, or, or a airy fairy, or, or you don't know, you're not realistic, you don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? If I know what's going on, I have to be miserable and terrible. No, not at all. So... Give yourself permission and do whatever you can do to actually bring yourself to your heart and begin to experience the joy of your own being and spread that joy out there with others. Big love, my darling. It's wonderful. Open yourself to the wonder of who you are. Hugs. Isn't it great? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>